LaFleur. Thanks for joining me here today with LaFleur Art and Soul Studio. The painting that we're going to be doing today is going to be apples. And the reason why I chose this is because many of my students would come to me and say, Stacy, I just don't know where to begin. I've never painted before and I want something that I can do. So I thought, well, where did I begin? And I remembered that one of the very first things that I painted with oil paints was these apples. And so you can see them here. I was 12 years old when I did this and it was in my grandmother's home. And after she passed away, my mom confiscated it. <laughs> but um, anyway, so this is my inspiration for this painting and let's get started. Okay, one of the things that I did was I went to the store and purchased a few apples. After I purchased the apples, I set them up with some lighting so that I could get a nice photograph from which to work on. So we're going to kind of follow this photograph and we're just going to do our own thing. Now if you have an apple at home, take it out, look at it, hold it in your hand, love it, make it your very own. Let's get started. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do, we have all of our brushes here, and I'm gonna start with the one half inch angle brush. I'm open your brown, and pick up your one half inch angle brush. Now, I'm right handed, and it makes it a lot easier if you pick up your paint cup and you have it in your other hand that you're not using. If you're left-handed, you want to have your paint cup in your right hand. Okay, let's get going. Now, the first thing that I want to do is load my brush. Now, again, when I load the brush, this is what loading means right here. I'm not really putting a whole lot of paint. This paint is highly concentrated and a little bit goes a long way. So the first thing that I want to do is just make my apple shape. So it's kind of a circle. These apples were really very round. So go ahead and make your first apple shape. If it's not perfect, see right here I kind of messed up, that's okay. You can always put more paint. Just make a shape, you can adjust it later. We just need a starting point. Now, let's do another one. This one is in the back. And because it's in the back, the top of it is gonna be a little bit taller than the first, and the bottom is gonna be a little bit higher than the bottom of the first one because it's behind it. And we wanna have that look of something being in the front and something being in the back. Okay, now my goal right now is to put the brown everywhere that there is a shadow. So looking at the apples, I can see that this whole area right here is, shed, it is in a shadow. So paint the brown right here, everywhere that there is a shadow. There, very easy, quick and easy. Do the first apple, the apple on the right. The shadow is right here. Now we see our shadow there. All right. Now the other thing that I want to add is we have a little shadow here. Now, when you're finished with that, close the brown, but don't wash your brush. The way that I would like you to clean your brush is to take the edge of your paper towel, fold it over, and just get the bulk of the paint off, but don't clean it. The reason why is I really don't want to add any water to the painting at this time. The paints take about five to 10 minutes to dry per layer. So we, uh, we don't wanna add any more water and extend that drying time at this time. If something happens that you mess up and you need to redo something, don't panic, just let it dry 
and then do it. Now, the next paint color that I want you to open is the red. If you're not at the point where you open the red, stop your DVD and rewind. If you're ready to move on with the red, then let's go. All right, now I'm putting a little bit of red onto my paintbrush and I want to paint right and close to that brown. And when I'm painting close to the brown, I want my red to go into the brown. And as you can see, I'm using little short strokes. Just little short strokes. I'm also holding my brush very, very lightly. I'm not pressing down on the canvas very hard. Now, at this point, don't feel frustrated. I know it doesn't look like much, but we're getting there. Be patient. All right, we just put that red into the brown and that's gonna be our shadow. Now, I'm gonna take a little more red and I'm going to put it in the upper section of that apple. I'm using little short strokes, short strokes. To look at that again, back up the DVD and watch it again. Now I'm moving on to the front apple. What I want to do is start at the edge of the brown and I want to work that red into the brown. There we go. Now the red is a semi-transparent paint, which means that anything that's underneath, you're gonna be able to see through it. So that's why we're putting the red over the brown and it's forming a shadow. This is gonna be our shadowed area. Now, once you're done with that, move on to the top. All right. Keep it up. You're doing great. All right. Now we're moving on to the upper area. Now I can see in my photograph that this apple isn't really red all the way up. So I'm going to stop a little closer. A little closer to the red and I'm going to leave some space at the top because in my photograph I can see that there's green and the yellow is also a semi-transparent paint. So if I put red on there then it's going to be more orange because yellow and red make orange. Okay, now I'm going to close my red. Well that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it right now. I'm going to do the same thing. Clean your brush with your paper towel. When you're done with your red and you're moving on to your yellow, clean your brush with your paper towel, just like that. Now, the yellow that we're using is called yellow ochre. Take a little bit of the yellow Put a little bit right up there. There we go. Now the stroke that I'm using, I'm starting at the top and I'm pulling it down. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I can see that nature has given the apple these streaks. Just like that. I'm just taking my brush. Take your brush, start at the top, and drag it down. 
start at the top, drag it down. Very easy. Take your brush, start at the top, drag it down. Alright, now we're going to go to the first apple. Take your brush, start at the top, and then drag it down. Now, I'm sure you can already see that your painting is starting to have a 3D effect. We're going to further enhance that in a little while, but we're going to need to let our paint dry just a little bit before we move on. So I'm continuing to add the yellow, and my stroke is up and down, so follow along and be sure to stroke your brush up and down, just like this. When you're done with the yellow, we're going to close the yellow. If you're ready to move on, close your yellow. If you still need to work a little while, stop your DVD, back it up, and look at it again. Open your brown. Below the apple, there's a shadow. So our shadow is an oval. And that oval is going to be painted brown. Below the other apple is another shadow. That shadow will be painted brown. So go ahead and paint your shadow. Now you can paint this as loose as you want or as tight as you want. If your hand is a little shaky and you can't really draw a straight line, that's okay. It's going to look fine. Just keep it up. While the apple is drying, we're going to do the lower half. Very good. Okay, so now I'm also going to open my yellow. And the lower half is going to be painted with the brown and the yellow. And because it is a table and it has a wooden effect, we're going to create a wooden effect with the stroke that we're using. And I'm going to do this using the yellow and the brown. And the stroke is going to be side to side. Side to side with the yellow and side to side with the brown. Now, we want to do this stroke, but this is one of the things that I'm going to tell you to get in and get out. Don't stir around in it. If you stir in it too long, the yellow and the brown will make a muddy looking mess. So you really just want to do it and get out. If something happens that you mess up, stop, let it dry, and then do it again. Letting it dry is very, very important before you do a repair. If you don't let it dry, 
it'll just pull the paint up and then you'll have what we call a hot spot. So, get in and get out. Put the brown in a long stroke and then put the yellow in a long stroke. Now when you get close to your edges, you might want to go ahead and paint your edges. If you paint your edges, they'll be nice and finished so that you can hang your painting on the wall directly right away, or you can put it in a canvas frame if you choose to frame it, and then you don't really need to paint the edges. But a lot of my students like to paint the edges, and it makes it really interesting if you paint the edges either in a solid color or if you just want to continue the background. All right. Now, I want to make that shadow really stand out. So I'm going to put the yellow very close to my shadow there without, without messing it up. Now, if something happens that you mess it up, you can always put more paint. You can always redo. I'm going to go over that shadow when I'm done, but now's not the right time. I just have to be patient. Patient is so hard, I know. I love these paints. I think these paints are really awesome. They go a long way, they're easy to clean up. And uh, one of the reasons why I actually wasn't really interested in painting with acrylic paint for a long, long time was I never could find an acrylic paint that I really liked. But after I found these paints, um, I, I'm hooked. I can do so much with them. Now I have to stand in front of my painting to get a good horizon line. That's what this is called, is a horizon line. When you're done with the yellow, we want to give it a chance to let it dry. So we're going to get out of it, let it dry, and we'll move on. We're going to go over everything one more time. So your painting is not finished. Just give it a chance to dry. When you're done with the yellow, we want to give it a chance to let it dry. So we're going to get out of it, let it dry, and we'll move on. We're going to go over everything one more time. So your painting is not finished. Just give it a chance to dry. So if you're ready to move on to your background, we're going to do that now. I need to clean my brush, so I'm going to clean the brush only with the paper towel. All right. Now open your white. So now we have the yellow, the brown, and the white open. We're going to use all three of these colors on the background. The first thing that I would like you to do is take a little bit of brown and just put it on the edges. This is called scumbling. We're scumbling, scumbling, scumbling. Just a little light stroke to get the paint on the canvas. 
Now, take a little bit of white and in every direction, pull that brown and that white together, just like this, just like so. If you want to add a little gold into the mix and brighten it up, you can do that. I'm just moving my brush in all directions. When I get close to the yellow, I'll go darker, because it's in the distance, it's in the background. And when you get really close to the apple, just be careful. All right, now put a little bit of white and a little bit of brown and a little bit of yellow. Just move your brush around in all directions. We're going to go over it again, so you still have plenty of time to work it. Now when I'm working, I like to go in all directions and give it a really soft, muddled background. You can add a little bit of gold. Now adding a little bit of the yellow will warm it up. A little bit of gold, a little bit of white, and a little bit of brown. In all directions. Now my background may be a little more blendy than yours will or you might want your background to be streaky. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if your background looks exactly like mine or looks different or everyone's painting is individual. So just be free and just do it. Just get in there, put that paint, and just do it. Because I know you can. So when I'm getting in the distance, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Just to give that perception of depth. And do that with light and dark. When I get close to that apple, I want to use the wide side of my brush to outline it. Now, by the wide side of the brush, what, what does she mean? Well, your brush can do two things. If you hold your brush in one direction, pull it down, it's going to make a skinny line. If you use it in another direction, it's going to make a wide line. So I find that when I'm trying to outline something and get a nice straight line, it's easier for me if I use the wide side of the brush. And whenever you're outlining something, what you want to do is press your brush against the canvas and let the brush do the work. Sometimes, especially beginners, they'll try to use the brush with a very light touch and outline and it shows the the shaking of the hands, and if you push the brush against the canvas, you won't have the shaking hands. Okay, so once you have your whole background covered, get out. Close up your white. Your yellow and your brown. Okay. We're going to clean our brush with the paper towel.
And now, since we're finished with the first layer, we can go ahead and clean our brush with the water. Dab your brush in the water. Nice and clean. And then take your paper towel and get the remaining, wa remaining water out of your brush. You want to be sure that you get the water out of your brush because if you put that water on your canvas, it'll pull up the paint that you've already sent. Okay, so now I'm going to move to a smaller brush. We have most of the background color on there and we're ready to do it one more time. So I'm going to use the one fourth of an inch brush. Going to open, open your white and your yellow. Now, if you look at my yellow, I have a little bit of brown in the yellow. It's okay. These paints mix together so beautifully. Getting a little bit of paint in your paint cup isn't going to mess up your paint. So, I can see that I have some yellow in these areas in my apple. So, I am use yellow and white. And when I'm when you do the stroke, I want to do it like this. Do it in the direction that the apple grows. So I'm taking my brush and I'm moving it out. yellow and white, we're putting the highlights on the apple. Now we're going to go to the first apple, yellow and white. First, take the white. stroke that I'm using, and then add your yellow, very light touch, there you go, you can do it, start at the top, and bring that brush down, just drag it down. Now, open your red. Now, your apples might be skinny, they might be fat, doesn't matter because there's all kinds of shapes of apples on a tree. Now we're going to add some red into here. And when I add my red, I can slowly blend these colors together. Now if you find that this brush is too small and you want to go back to your half inch brush, that's okay too. Some people might prefer to use a larger brush, some people may prefer to use a smaller brush. There's no right or wrong way. I've provided you with the brushes, but whatever you want to do is fine. Now I'm just going over this one more time. Remember what we did? We did the red and then we did the yellow.
red. And a little bit of yellow. Now at this point, I'm getting rid of my paper because this is not a photograph and it doesn't have to look like a photograph. We just want to give the impression of an apple. And even right now, the painting isn't finished, but we can tell it's an apple. Now, I'm just going to go over this painting again. Everything that I did the first time, I'm going to do again. Just keep adding that paint until we're happy with what we have. Now, if you need to add some more brown, that's fine. Pick up the brown. Add some more. The unique thing about this paint is that the first time you put it on, it's almost like you're setting down the foundation. And then, once you're sure everything is in its right place, then you can just put it again. Follow the directions, everything you did before, just do it again. Go over it one more time. And when you go over it that last time, it all comes together. Again, my strokes, I'm following the shape of the apple, following the shape. There. Now you want the apples, you wanna be able to tell that they're two separate. You can do that with shadow. Add a little bit more at the top here. Now, I want to go over the shadow. Take your brush, just go over your shadow area. There we go, and you can kind of work it into the, the wood grain of the tabletop. Do we want to put a stem on the apple? Of course. Now one thing I find, in cold weather, your paint takes a little bit longer to dry. In warm weather, it seems to dry much faster. You never want to do a second coat of paint until the first coat of paint is dry. To tell if the first coat of paint is dry, just lightly put your finger on it. If there's any paint on your finger, you need to wait a few more minutes. If you can touch it and there's no paint on your finger, then go ahead and go on to the second coat. What did we do the first time? What colors did we use? We used the brown, the white, and the gold. So we're gonna repeat our process one more time. So we're gonna say brown, close to the apples. Now you can do your background as light or as dark as you want. 
it's up to you. Now one of the things about doing the background is you want to work only in an area that you can manage during the drying time. You don't want to put paint all over the place. You want to just stay in one localized area, finish that spot, and then move on to another area. So, put some brown down. Make sure all of it is off the brush. Your brush is pretty dry before you pick up the white. Now we're going to scumble in the white. Scumble very lightly, moving in all directions. There we go. All directions. You can make it nice and blended, or you can put stronger marks as your background. It really doesn't matter. It's up to you. Whatever your painting style is, and if you don't even know what your painting style is, just be free to try different things. I enjoy looking at paintings where they're painting painted very loosely, but my painting style is more uh, realistic so I have a hard time doing that myself but whatever you want to do it's fine I'm just giving you a guide okay. if you want your background to be darker than lighter you want to use mostly the gold and the brown. If you want your background to be lighter, then go ahead and add more white. That second coat just makes such a huge difference. Once you get to the second coat, you'll feel much, much better about your painting. I don't know why, but that's the way it is. So brown and gold. Okay, once you have a second coat on your background, you're ready to do the table. A second coat, that is. If you're ready to go on to the table, we're gonna do that now. If you're not ready to go on to the table, stop the DVD and give yourself a little bit of extra time. On the tabletop, all I wanna do is repeat what I did before. My stroke, is side to side. So bring your stroke side to side. I'm only using the gold and the brown on the tabletop. Side to side. Now, you want the gold to get right up to that shadow, but not necessarily in it. Now that shadow looks like it's integrated right into the table. Start right under your apple, and pull it out. Right under the apple, and pull it outwards. That's gonna give you a good shadow. Shadow is very important in making something look three-dimensional, making it look like it has some depth. Light and shadow. I'm gonna pull a little bit of that brown into my apple here, just to give it more shadow. 
that apple, this bottom corner, well not the corner, but this bottom area of the apple is almost in the dark. So it's okay to show that. After you finish the table, you want to clean your brush. Cleaning your brushes are very important. Now, my water's getting a little bit dirty, but after you're completely done with your project, you wanna clean your brush again with a little bit of soap and warm water, just to make sure that you get everything out. These brushes are really nice brushes and I like them a lot. So if you clean them well, you will be able to keep these brushes for a long time and having the right tool is very important. Okay, when you're finished with the background, your apples and the tabletop, there's a couple of things that we can add to our painting to further enhance the look. We want to do a few highlights. So, where does that light hit the apple? Well, say it hits here. And maybe it hits here. So what I'm doing is I put a little bit of white and I'm coming back with a little bit of yellow. And with my quarter inch brush, taking the little strokes and dragging it down. Small strokes. Where does the light hit the apple? With the small brush. My strokes are up and down. Take a little white and then a little yellow. And bring your strokes outwards, just like this. Now, when I do this, I'm not using a lot of paint, just a little bit of paint to give the look of light. Take a little bit of white with your quarter inch brush, put it right here at the top, anywhere you want the light to be. So if you imagine that the light is shining down, where does that light hit? It hits on the top of the apple, of course. So we're gonna put a little bit in there by dragging that brush down. Then take a little bit of yellow. The reason why I'm using a little bit of yellow is because the white looks so bright. If you add a little bit of yellow, it just mutes it down.
Now with the quarter inch brush, I can really give my apple the streaked effect that you see in, uh, in a real apple. You can see how the streaks go through that apple. Now, take a look at your painting. If you have any areas of the painting where the canvas is still peeking through, you want to get in there and cover those up. Don't want any canvas peeking through. Also, if there's any areas where things just need to be cleaned up a little bit, now's your chance to do that. See my stroke following the shape of the apple. Last but not least, the most important part of your painting, and that is signing your painting. Now, I have a lot of people say, I hate to sign my painting, I don't want to sign that. I don't want people to know that I did that. Well, I say, don't be tough on yourself. You always want to sign your painting because you never know. Later down the road, your children, your family, your friends, somebody would probably be happy to have that painting and just be overjoyed to have it. But they won't know you did it unless your name's on it. So some people sign their name with their first name, some people sign their name with their last name, or some people sign with their initials. Personally, if it's an oil painting, I sign it La Fleur, and if it is an acrylic painting, like in my classes, I sign it Stacy. So you want to sign it with a color that's really going to show up on the background. You want the paint to be very, very fluid. If your paint has been open a little while, your paint might be starting to thicken up a little bit. All you have to do is take a little bit of water, put that water, just kind of stir it up a little bit so that it's very fluid, and then hold your brush just like you would an ink pen. I like to put my pinky out to stabilize my hand, but that is absolutely not necessary. So just hold it and let the brush do the work. Let the brush be very fluid and sign your name. You don't have to go too fast. When you're done with your painting, you have to make sure that you let it dry very, very good before you clear coat your painting. And my suggestion is to wait overnight because it's the craziest thing. You'll go to bed tonight and tomorrow morning you'll wake up and look at your painting with fresh eyes and you'll see it in a whole new light. If there's any parts of your painting that need to be touched up, you're going to see it tomorrow morning. So, let your painting dry really good, and then you can clear coat. Okay, we're back. My painting is dry, and I hope yours is too, because we're gonna clear coat now. To get a good finish on your painting, the best thing to do is to take your painting off of the easel and lay your painting flat. The varnish is somewhat thinner than the paint, so it's best to clear coat with it laying flat. Apply the varnish in even coats, and two coats is fine. Before applying the second coat, make sure that the first coat is dry completely. As you varnish, clear coat your painting, you will notice that the colors come back to life, just as if they were wet. And this gives a professional looking quality to your painting.
allow your clear coat about five or 10 minutes to dry before you apply a second coat. If it's still white, that means it's not dry. After you finish varnishing your painting, your painting is ready to hang directly on the wall or you can frame it. I hope you enjoyed your class. Thank you so much and let's do it again.